These reforms represent the strongest consumer financial protections in history. And these protections will be enforced by a new consumer watchdog with just one job, looking out for people, not big banks, not lenders, not investment houses, looking out for people as they interact with the financial system. One of the real genuine accomplishments of the financial regulation bill signed by President Obama is the creation of the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. As we watch what happened at the SEC during the financial crisis and at the Minerals Management Service in the years leading up to the Deepwater Horizon oil spill, we learn that it's not enough to have a regulatory agency. One of the most problematic trends we have seen is the cozy relationship between government agencies and the industries they're supposed to regulate. What matters over and above the existence of a regulatory agency is the culture, its sense of mission and ethos. And that's why the stakes are so high over who is going to head this new bureau. In the past, we've seen people running agencies who have come from the industry they're supposed to regulate, and then they pass through the resolving, revolving door back into that aid industry. The most natural and qualified person for this agency, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, is someone who has been looking out for consumers and writing about consumer finance for a long time. Harvard Law Professor and Chair of the Congressional Oversight Panel for the TARP bailout funds, Elizabeth Warren. In the summer of 2007, Professor Warren wrote, quote, Clearly it is time for a new model of financial regulation, one focused primarily on consumer safety rather than corporate profitability. Financial products should be subject to the same routine safety screening that now governs the sale of every toaster, washing machine, and child's car seat sold on the American market. So why not create a financial product safety commission? Professor Warren went on to describe the responsibilities of an agency to evaluate financial products and get rid of the tricks and traps for consumers. Now, contrast that with Ben Bernanke, who was totally wrong about the subprime housing crisis and rewarded with an appointment to run the Fed. And Larry Summers, who was wrong on the, on the wrong side of deregulating derivatives markets and became the president's chief economic advisor. People in the establishment tend to fail upward. But here we have the rare instance of someone who actually got it right. The rare situation where the person who came up with the idea could run the agency and imbue it with the consumer first perspective it needs to be effective. So just for a change, how about this? Rather than putting someone as the head of an agency who was wrong, we put somebody in charge who was right. Joining us now is one of the authors of the Dodd-Frank Wall Street Reform and Consumer Protection Act, Chairman of the House Financial Services Committee, Congressman Barney Frank of Massachusetts. Chairman Frank, thanks so much for being here. Thank you. Okay, so why do you think Elizabeth Warren should be appointed to head up uh, the new Consumer Financial Protection Bureau? Well, for the reason you stated, plus uh, another one, she's a very savvy political operator. We have this uh, unfortunate view that if you are passionately idealistic and committed to a set of, of, of views, then you, you somehow must be unrealistic. And if you are someone who's hard-headed and understands how to work the political process, then you must be someone without values. Uh, that's a terrible division. In fact, uh, if you are idealistic, then you seem to me are morally obligated to be pragmatic because otherwise your ideals never get to help anybody. And Elizabeth Warren is an exemplar of that. Uh, I, I had a wonderful experience working with her. I met her when we started out on this. I was glad to be her ally in getting this established. And throughout the process, she was sensible and thoughtful and effective. We worked very closely together. So uh, the, the notion that somehow because she cares so much, she couldn't do this effectively is exactly wrong. And I was glad, by the way, you mentioned subprime because this is not simply to protect consumers, although that's very important. It's also to protect the economy. One of the fights we had, and ironically, the Republicans try to blame our advocacy for lower-income people for the crisis. Exactly the opposite is the truth. Beginning in 2004, Democrats on the committee I now chair, but we were then in the minority, tried to restrict legally these subprime loans that should not have been granted to people who shouldn't have gotten them under terms they couldn't pay for. Finally, in this bill, we do create the laws because we finally got the ability with the Democratic Congress and the president to do it. And this bureau will administer those laws. So when the bureau steps in, I hope under Elizabeth Warren, and protects consumers from being put in loans that, that are just going to ruin their lives, that will also be 
helping protect the economy. And, you know, I was just going over some quotes from the Republicans, the Wall Street Journal. Oh, the market will do it. Stop blocking the dream of home ownership. And, of course, that was their argument for not going forward. But, Elizabeth Warren, in addition, everything you said is a very able operator. And that's going to be important because there will be obstacles put in the way and she is smart and tough as well as idealistic. Let's talk about the obstacles. I mean, there, there's sort of been these sort of somewhat nebulous news reports. There was a report that, that, that there was that Timothy Geithner was not terribly enthused about there and then he had nice things to say about her. Robert Gibbs had, it seemed, very uh, complimentary things to say about her. Do you sense that there is uh, a desire on the part of the White House to name her to this post and how much opposition do you expect from the banks uh, to, to her being uh, so named? Well, I have spoken to uh, people in the White House staff, and uh, uh, I, I've expressed my views in ways that I know the president has seen. And uh, I, some are enthusiastic, and others may have some questions. One of the issues raised was, well, it might be hard to get it confirmed in the Senate. My first response was, gee, uh, the way the Senate operates these days, I don't think I'd be for anybody who could easily be confirmed <laughs> in the Senate. That's not a badge of honor. But secondly, you know, the filibuster is bad enough when it's invoked. To, to cave in to the threat of a non-existent filibuster is a very bad idea. Uh, and and uh, I, I've seen in uh, Senator Dodd, whom I admire enormously, and he was a great partner, and he was one of the ones who said, well, she could be tough to get confirmed. And my answer to him is, well, all the more reason to try. You can't allow that kind of opposition in a pocket. As to the banks, one of the things I want to make uh, a point of pride here, because you were talking with uh, your previous guest about mobilizing the unemployed. People, especially liberals, tend to overbelieve the view that only big money counts. In fact, when the public gets mobilized, and my colleagues hear from their constituents, it makes a difference. And the proof of that is in the bill that we just passed, the big banks and the large investment houses did very badly. It was the small banks that did it. In fact, the independent community bankers, the association of, of, of smaller banks, took out an ad today in some of the Washington papers thanking Congress because we respected their role and they weren't the ones who caused this problem and we put them in a better footing than the large banks. So, yeah, I do think some of the large institutions will be upset. By the way, one of the things that I hope will happen is this. I hope the large banks will be making less money from credit card fees and from overdrafts and from other things because I would like to get them back into lending money. That's what we have banks for. And to the extent that they can increase their profits in other ways, they have a diminished incentive to lend. The Washington Post reported this afternoon, uh, and then this goes to the sort of confirmability question, that two Republican appointees of the Congressional Oversight Panel who work with Elizabeth Warren praised her work on the panel, saying she was, quote, collegial and professional, and they found her quite willing to modify her views if presented with well-reasoned, cogent arguments. That sounds like exactly the sort of sort of pragmatism you've been describing, and I wonder if you can imagine a universe in which there would be re Republican support for her. Absolutely, and there'll be political pressure to do it. It's interesting, you mentioned earlier some of the Tea Party people. Look, there are people who are angry. In many ways, they are angry for good reasons. They, they express it, I think, in, in, in ways that would make things worse rather than better. Elizabeth Warren's been a consistent critic of, of, of any bias uh, in the system against the average citizen. And I think if you look at her record and look at where she's been, you will find people who would otherwise identify on the more conservative spectrum, part of the spectrum, who will be supportive. Yeah, I, I think that there are a number of Republicans who will be voting for her if she is nominated, and maybe a few moderate Democrats who don't. Um, again, I think as people get to know her, they will be impressed, as I was. There were a couple of times, frankly, uh, the Obama administration sent us a, uh, a draft of the consumer agency, which had some things in it that I thought were politically unwise, would generate a lot of opposition, and wouldn't be very practical. And that's when I first began to work with Elizabeth Warren, and I approached her and said, gee, uh, you know, are you wedded to these? She said, oh, no, I think they're, they're bad ideas. I was just <laughs> delighted that uh, she had that ability to focus on what's important and what isn't. So, uh, uh, no, I, I don't. I, and let me say this about the president in defense of him in general. It's not his fault that we didn't get a public option. We just couldn't have gotten the votes. Many of us tried very hard. The stimulus bill was smaller than it should have been. That was not his fault. Republicans in the, in the Senate blocked him. There have been other things where he has been on our side and we've been on the same side and he hasn't been able to do it. But with regard to this appointment, there'll be nobody but him who will be making that decision. So this will be, I think, uh, uh, a very good test. And I, I believe he's going to pass it. I think that, uh, uh, you know, this is not good. to allow a filibuster threatened to block something that makes so much sense would be a very bad idea.
Chairman Barney Frank, Democrat of Massachusetts, laying it on the president's doorstep. Thank you so much for being here.